Howdy Pilgrims, Pappy Stew here. Hope this finds you well. Last year in January I decided that I was going to take the big plunge. I had a 250 two-stroke Yamaha outboard on my uh, Almar and you know it was still running good but she looked long in the tooth and the technology was old so I decided to uh, bite the bullet and uh, repower. So I repowered my Almar with a 300 uh, Merc, supercharged Merc, uh, four stroke. Actually, I started off trying to cut corners and bought a 275 used and ran into all kinds of problems. Matching parts and then hidden maintenance problems with the motor and it just turned into a total fiasco. So then I went into a three month waiting period in the middle of the process to uh, put this new Merc 300 on. Uh, yeah, it's turned into quite a nightmare. I started off in January, figured I'd long be back on the water before summer, and it was August before I got back in the water, so you do the math. But anyway, when it was all said and done, it was a good deal because um, got a lot of different improvements out of it. Big picture with the old 250, Two stroke, my top end was you know a little over 30 knots. My fuel consumption was pretty bad. And cruising speed was a little better, but it was still pretty grim. With this new 300, I uh, increased my top end by 25% to 40 knots. And uh, I'd almost doubled my fuel economy. Uh, at 40 knots, she burns 30 gallons per hour. But at 30 knots, she only burns 15 gallons per hour. So that was my old top end with uh, better than half the fuel consumption, cut in half rather. So, uh, and then in the process, I also managed to get the kicker motor stolen off of the boat while I was waiting for the new motor to come in. So I ended up with the new kicker as well, 9.9, .9, same that was on it before, a Bigfoot 9.9 .9 Mercury. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you the motor, some of the technologies involved. Uh, it wasn't just a matter of changing out the motor, unfortunately. I also had to uh, change out all my control systems. Uh, of course, I got rid of the oil injection system going to a four-stroke, but uh, the C-Star steering was inappropriate for this new motor. I'll show you why when I take the camera off the uh, tripod and point it at it for you and ended up having to buy Mercury's dedicated uh, steering system as well as their uh, control system. It's all fly-by-wire. There's a computer on board the motor. There's also a computer up at the helm and it's all fly-by-wire with the control systems. And the steering system is a high-pressure pump system uh, that's quite different than a C-Star type steering system. Okay, on close examination you can see that the uh, steering ram is actually an integral part with the mount. And it's not just the ram, but the pivot piston that runs up and down inside the mount as well. It handles really well in the water. Just a couple turns each direction on the wheel. Well, I hope you can see it, but there's also a cathodic protection system that uh, feeds current to the frame of the motor while it's in the water, which helps with uh, galvanic corrosion situations as well as the zincs. Okay, here you can see the control systems that are associated with the new Merck motor. Um, you've got the SmartCraft instrumentation, which gives you a heck of a lot more inf information because of the onboard computer on the motor. A whole bunch of parameters that you could never see with a two-stroke uh, comes in real handy a lot of temperatures uh, cooling pressures fuel flow fuel consumption um, it's just just night and day difference being able to tell what's going on with the motor and then uh, the switch is down here below 
and then the actual throttle control here. All that's fly by wire. There's a computer module up here that talks from this control station back to under the cowling of the motor. And uh, there's no cables or anything between here, just wires. Okay, this here is the steering system. It's up in the trans transom and kind of dark, so I put on the night vision so you can actually see what it looks like. And then it ended up with three batteries in the transom and they had to be a special type and make of batteries in order to work for this motor. They did, it requires uh, pretty advanced battery systems. I'll show a few pictures of the old motor that was on the boat. Uh, when it was all said and done, it was a great deal. There's a lot of pain involved. It took nine months to get it done. Uh, a lot of that was my own mistake of trying to go used first. Uh, you know, I dumped a lot of cash in it. The motor, new motor was 25, and with the labor and the controls and everything, probably another 15. Probably spent somewhere around 40, maybe even as much as 45, but there was some loss involved with the old motor, and labor twice, and shipping back and forth and all, but she sure does handle on the water nice. She maneuvers quickly because she's uh, very responsive to the helm with this new uh, high pressure uh, steering system. Uh, the SmartCraft gauges have some interesting applications like cruise control for both speed and RPM. And uh, the information that I get from the motor as far as, you know, instantaneous uh, fuel consumption and the parameters of the motor while it's running are really helpful so allows me to operate this uh, boat 30 foot boat weighs about 80,000 pounds scratch that weighs about 8,000 pounds um, in all types of water conditions in the most economic manner that uh, I probably could with any motor so it's pricey it was a pricey job uh, but it's great. Now that the pain is over, it's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, just thought I'd share with you the repower of this 30-foot Almar and uh, what went on involved and what the results were. Hope this finds you well. Pappy Stu said it, and I'm out and on the side.